2020, Significant Seams Artist in Mid-Devon issued an open invitation for people to contribute patches about their experience of the pandemic for a collective quilt, beginning a project connecting people despite social distance. For me, it's really important to be part of something. This was a nice opportunity to sit and rest and um, meditate a bit. It gave me a focus. I felt a really big part of it was just truly a lifesaver. Patches received add up to more than one quilt. They are story of shared but varied experiences, much reflection and observation. In this particular project, we found we needed to support each other as artists, as freelancers who became quickly vulnerable uh, ourselves, whilst also rallying to support the people we normally would be supporting through courses we deliver with the NHS and in other ways. We also thought there are a lot of people who we haven't worked with who would benefit from the type of activity we promote and deliver. So this project has led to this exhibition, which includes work from people who contributed and joined in our invitation, as well as a, a collection of work from each of our artists. During this recent slowing of time, this distortion of reality, this rightful reclamation of nature by the planet, I contemplate fact dressed up as fiction and fiction displayed as fact, stitching the raw data of daily briefings and incontinent government guidelines into a pristine, virus-free WC has given me time to consider how veils of data and infobytes performed impeccably on stage create distraction from incompetence. Why this constant bombardment of numerical data? The onslaught of statistics fed to us in irregular patterns and to what end? To confuse and frighten? to comfort and reassure, to inform us impartially or to impress and divert. I wonder, what is being suppressed? What is so valid about these values? 
What stories are masked by these numbers stitched onto a socially distanced length of luxury quilted toilet roll in short supply following pandemic panic? Can reams of numbers removed from context really reflect reality? As isolated entities, what meaning do they portray? To reduce our lives down to a paint-by-numbers existence is disempowering and disheartening. Where's the empathy in this barrage of daily data? Where's the humanity, the soul? Inconsistency in guidelines, hypocrisy in the regulation of rules, conflicting Covid confusion reigns. I have found myself needing to create in order to try and make sense of and give meaning to the new collective narrative of our individual lives. The information overload becomes balanced and manageable through the slowness of pace found within the process of making, thinking time, hands and mind time, the resilience of creativity. taking my dog out and the tightly the tightly wound spirals of a fern getting ready to unfurl caught my eye and caught my imagination began an exploration of my own emotions really and what it means to be an individual amongst community during a period where we weren't able to connect in the ways we normally would. Uh, I was entranced in the coming days as I paid attention to the ferns around my garden and how their fronds would gently unfurl, how arms would open, fingers, you know, hands would come off of those arms and how I could imagine the lower branches supporting the unfurling, the tightly wound concerns from the top and creating a padding beneath. And I loved the ideas that that inspired in me about community and about individuality. So since, Throughout lockdown and, and in the ensuing months of getting used to and trying out, going out, and the new ways we need to behave to protect one another, uh, I have been using hand stitching. Uh, I historically have done a lot more by machine. I've used spinning wool gotten from shearing that happened during lockdown here in the village where I live from one of my neighbors. Uh, I've spun wool um, and I have experimented with ferns as part of my artworks as both the subjects and at times as the medium. I've made dye I have used them as stencils I've used them as prints I've drawn their shadows 
I have just drawn them. Um, ultimately, I have come to put together now a collection of work I'm calling Unfurling 2020 that I think or hope conveys the very many different emotions uh, I've experienced during this time uh, in and through ferns and representations of my experience of this time, which has been artistically rich in ways I've, I suppose I've shared here, um, but it's also been very busy with working from home, um, with homeschooling, with uh, paying attention at this strange distance to all sorts of news. And the time's been enriched by kitchen gardening. So I hope you enjoy my installation that attempts to tell something of my experience of the pandemic as experienced so far. Thank you for uh, honoring my work with your attention. to breathe and it became dangerous to be around other people and we just all had to find creative ways to connect with others and that was why the quarantine quilt project was so incredible because we were able to get in touch with people all across Britain and especially people in Devon who contributed most of the patches. Um, I was all set this summer to go to Oklahoma to connect with my Native American ancestry. I'm part Muscogee and Austrian American and I wasn't able to do that, of course, so I found myself at home. I joined a Facebook group of Indigenous mask makers, and I'd like to show you some of my work.
is called Breathe. This quilt sort of charts the line between slavery, the transatlantic traffic of human beings to the Americas, to America in particular, and the rise of slave patrols, plantation police, how they're linked to police departments in modern day United States, and police brutality. Um, all of that comes together into this piece. I'm also a poet, and I wrote a piece of haiku that I put around the border of the quilt. Smoldering embers, centuries old rage, ignite into flame, we breathe. from that that my works all this year has really been called and about cocooning in 2020 and I started off this work producing some cyanotypes and really interested in energy and the sun and the effect on those emulsions these early photographs I was interested in the fact that when you're in a cocoon or when a moth is in a cocoon the larvae state just becomes like soup and it then reforms and I was just um, wanting to find out the meaning of that in relation to myself and, and the world. What would happen during lockdown? Would we all come out the other side of it different? Um, a fully fledged moth. So uh, my work then, the scientist types were exploring that sort of human nature moth relationship. This one's a little small for me to get inside. <laughs> this one is human shape. My art's practice is experiential and it's collaborative. And as a result, that's why I have worked with uh, a friend called Pat and Lauren to make a little film of the story Cooning 2020.
you've enjoyed our exhibition. Thank you for considering sharing it, leaving comments in the posts below, and maybe considering making a small donation. Our next ambition is to develop a exhibition that can tour the country, bringing together not only our quilts and artworks, but those of the other 10 projects across the country. Our, our artists are now connecting with those artists who led those projects. And we are exploring what it will take in these very uncertain times and any support you can offer would be re very greatly appreciated. In the meantime, we hope you'll keep stitching, keep making and keep connecting with people around you as well as those with shared interests, whatever they may be.